I, Mohamed B.S. Diallo, having been appointed as Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of the Gambia according to law. So help me God. I, Mohamed B.S. Diallo, do swear that I will execute the functions of the Office of the Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia without fear or favor, affection or ill will, according to the Constitution and other laws of the Gambia. So help me God. I, Mohamed B.S. Jalo, having been appointed as Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia, do swear that I will not directly or indirectly reveal such matters as may be committed to my secrecy. So help me God. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah ta'ala wa barakatuh. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, Honorable Ministers here are present, Imam Rati of Banjul, the Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service, the Chief, the, the Chief of Staff of His Excellency, the President, staff of the office of the vice president and my the family members and friends um, I welcome you all um, first of all i would like to thank you your excellency for the confidence uh, bestowed in me um, in this appointment i know that i have worked with you uh, before as is your secretary general and I'm honored and humbled that you felt it worthy that what I did then satisfied you to enable you to appoint me once again to this high office. I myself and my family, we are very grateful um, for that confidence, um, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, permit me to also pay tribute to His Excellency, the late Vice President Barra Ali Ujuf. The late Vice President was my teacher and my mentor. And I think excuse me, I'm just trying to avoid being, being emotional here. The late Vice President was a very committed individual. Like I said, he taught me in school and he was also our permanent secretary at the Ministry of Education at the time. And uh, his commitment to duty was on question. And I'm sure some colleagues here can attest to that. Um, he was somebody who was always going beyond what was required as a line of duty. We will spend hours in the office, weekends, he will come back to the office to make sure that what should be done is done. So I really want to um, highlight that he had also sought us leadership. I remember two occasions, on one occasion when we were working on the, the restructuring of the Ministry of Education and uh, the challenges that he faced. In fact, I could remember one of the statements he made was that you cannot make omelette without breaking an egg. And just to show the challenge he faced, one of the subordinates said to him, the egg breakers will be broken. That showed the challenge. But he, and when I asked him later, he said, I said, why do you, you know, put up to this? He said, I know that one day I'm going to leave. But when I leave, I want to leave a legacy. That was our former vice president. There was also another occasion which Your Excellency I want to share, which actually demonstrated leadership. 
when we were supposed to go to Washington to negotiate for a grant for a project on behalf of the Ministry of Education, we had a delegation. And some people went to the Secretary General at the time and said to him, these people at education, their delegation is too big. It needs to be reduced. He said to them, he said to the Secretary General, this team, I am the least important in the team. If there is anybody who is going to drop, I am the one who is going to drop. And Your Excellency, that was what he did. He made sure that everybody left, but he dropped from the team. Again, that shows leadership. So, Your Excellency, I join you in mourning him and the people of this country, the type of vice president that, that we had. And we owe a lot to him, myself, and some other people around in this, in this um, August gathering, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, you have challenged us. Say whatever we do, it has to be based on rule of law and due process. I know that many people keep talking about Singapore. Many people keep talking about Rwanda and even next door Cape Verde. But I want to share your excellency that all these countries that are being mentioned, what people don't share is their commitment and their discipline. When we talk about Singapore, the first thing that Lee Kuan Yew did was to make sure that she brought discipline into the society and focus on basic services, that is basic education and basic health services. So, Your Excellency, we want to assure you that we are going to do all we can to make sure that the promises that you made to the electorate are fulfilled by working closely with the other uh, cabinet colleagues. My predecessor, the former vice president, he talked about team, teamwork and team building. And I think he has already built a team. What is left for me is to continue with that team and make sure that it bears fruit. Your Excellency, I would want to make sure that this, your government, is based on evidence-based decision-making. We have a lot, I mean, I know that for some of us, we have been hearing it, or we have been leading for so many years without data. But I think, Your Excellency, you cannot take informed decisions without relevant data. We thank the General um, Bureau of Statistics. They are producing a lot of statistics which many people are not using. It's my intention, Your Excellency, to make sure that I work with the relevant sectors so that they use all that data that is being um, produced over the years. We just don't produce data for the development partners. We produce data to make sure that we are making informed, informed decisions, Your Excellency. I know that when you build infrastructure, people will say, this is politicking. Now, Your Excellency, your government has made a lot of efforts in terms of education. But we know that there are still a lot of children who are still out of school. The data from the Ministry of Basic Education shows it, data from statistics also shows it. In order to move forward, we have to make sure that no one is left behind. Everybody has to come to school. Now, to do that means that we have to provide more resources. As evidence has showed, the last 10% to come to school is always the most expensive in terms of, in terms of unit costs. Now, Somebody coming from that rural area has risen up to the level of secretary to cabinet is a success for, 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 for the government to make sure that we provide access to the remotest of, of communities. Those who know me know that I always like to talk about Nyankui. I'm not talking about Nyankui, I'm talking about Nyankui. Nyankui is so remote. Yes, Your Excellency, you have done the Lamin Kota Pasamas road, but Nyankui is 15 kilometers from that road down into a hill. So they have access problems, they have water problems, they have electricity problems. Now can you imagine if you bring all of those services to that, to that community, what impact it can, it can make? We know that electricity is one of the most transforming 
um, in terms of economic growth. We have seen it, those communities which did not have electricity before, when they have, how it has transformed, transformed their, their, their economy. And the, and the roads. Some of us who are in Banjul, we think that water is not a problem because when you open the tap, the water comes out. But somebody in Makamasiri, whereby they are, they are wells as, as deep as 50 meters, sometimes even more, they have to you know, use donkeys to draw the water. I think Your Excellency, the program that you have initiated through the DSPD um, is something that we loud and we want to make sure that we support so that the resources are there, so that everybody has access to water and proper, proper sanitation. Your Excellency, I would want to assure you that I would work together with the Ministers of Finance and Trade to make sure that the private sector is empowered, because it is the private sector that creates jobs. The government provides the, re the relevant um, uh, environment for the private sector to, to create jobs. And I think we owe it to our people to make sure that that is, that is happening, even though we know there are challenges, but we also want to streamline some of the, some of the processes. Your Excellency, you have also initiated some public sector reforms. I want to assure you that we will work with the Ministers of Justice and Minister of Public Service to facilitate those public sector reforms. We know that one of the challenges of public sector reform is the legal environment and regulations. Some sectors I know were created since the First Republic. They have the legal mandate, but regulations were not promulgated. We want to make sure that we are able to, to, to close all of, all of those gaps, Your Excellency, to facilitate the work. Your Excellency, you have also talked about effective civil service. I want to assure you that I will work with the Secretary General and the Minister of Public Service to make sure that we improve on the civil service so that it can go back to the glory days. When you appointed me as Secretary General, that was one of the challenges that you gave me. And I started on that uh, road. And I'm assuring you that I'll continue to work with the Minister of Public Service and the Secretary General uh, to make sure that we achieve the target that you have set, set for us. Your Excellency, finally, I would like to allow you, me to thank um, the people. I would, first of all, with your permission, like to thank the Imam Rati of Banjul, who has supported me <coughs> all throughout. And I think everybody associated, associates me with him. And I'm honored by his, his presence. Um, in fact, to a point where people think that I'm from Medina Serenmas. But I think it's an, it's an honor to be associated with such, such, such a personality. Um, I want, also want to thank my family for all the support that they have given me um, throughout. It's not easy. Um, but Your Excellency, permit me, I want to make a special thanks to the chairman the chairman of the public service commission Mr. Samate, when I, when I was offered scholarship in 1989, my father could not afford to provide a guarantee. I'm very sorry. My father, when I told him that we need to have a guarantee, he said, let's go. 
went to the, the, the PMO, the establishment at the time. As we entered the office, Mr. Samate was coming out of his office. And my father said to him, my son is going for studies and we need a guarantor. There and then, he just signed the papers without even asking. So I'm forever grateful. I'm glad the Honorable Samate is here. I want you to extend my thanks and appreciation to him. My father is late now for so many years. But I will never forget what he did for me. Your Excellency, I would like to also take this opportunity to thank my father's friends, the late M.V. Ojalo and his family. I think today we have Omar Sar um, representing, representing them here. Um, because I see myself as a symbol of friendship. I was born into that friendship, you know, name me one uh, after one of them. And uh, I would also want to really single out Alaji Kaba Jalo, because my father told me how much he has helped him personally. So, Your Excellency, I think I would want to stop here uh, and thank everybody. Thank Your Excellency for the confidence, like I said, given me and the support. I couldn't have performed my duties as Secretary General without your support, Your Excellency, so I want to applaud that. And I'm sure that you are also going to give me the same support um, that I need in this, in this uh, position. So thank you very much. Thank you.